Hello my lovely fume heads, it's Scent Gourmand Trina here. So I've decided recently that it would be prudent if I were to prioritize reviews of fragrances in my collection which are running out. It sadly already happened four times this year where I finished off a fragrance, decluttered the bottle and no longer can give you my review, or my best effort anyway, uh, without having to repurchase basically. No more! Today we're looking at a fragrance from Christian Dior's exclusive high-end Collection Privée, which is also referred to as the Maison Dior or Maison Christian Dior collection, and which some people might define as a niche collection. Well, certainly it is less mainstream and pricier, I'll give it that. The scent, which I only have a few more sprays of, is Rouge Trafalgar, which was launched in 2020, created by in-house perfumer François Demachy. This is the 125 ml bottle. Collection Privé bottles on the official Dior site are also sold in uh, 250 ml bottles, like this Oud Esfahan bottle here. You can see the, the difference. And they're also sold in a whopping 450 ml size, which I cannot fathom, to be frank. Although you don't see it on the website, uh, you can get Christian Dior, Maison Christian Dior bottles in 30 ml or perhaps 50, I'm not sure, spray bottles as well. I know this because I sprayed wickedly fast through such a size of Oud Isfahan years, years back, which is why I own the, uh, the bigger version now, which I'm consuming at a much slower pace. You can't wear oud all the time, especially when you live in Japan. You can also get these uh, 8 ml, I think they're 8 ml, sample sizes, uh, which are non-spray, and I have proudly 24 of these little guys currently in my collection, and I'm trying not to touch them before I get a chance to analyze them for you. If not on YouTube, then at least on my blog. Probably both. Anyway, I'm digressing, but I have to start with the bottle uh, because I love the packaging of fragrances from the Collection Privé. The bottles come in cylindrical cases and I've managed not to toss this mini one out to give you an idea. Overall, I love the simple and classy black and white vibe and absolutely love Ooh, hear that, the magnetic closure on the cap. Once I'm done with the bigger bottles in my collection, I plan to save the caps and use them as door or draw drawer handles in uh, future furniture products. What do you think? So Dior describes Rouge Trafalgar as a fruity floral, and I thought it might end up being a sheep floral because that's what Fragrantica calls it. But no, there's no oak moss, there's no vetiver or other real grassy green stuff going on. But actually, yeah, there, there is a, a very mild hint of a patch at the base, so I think it's more of a fruit chili in the end. Dior's note list is not what I'm going to share with you right now because I, I'm a little bit biased in favor of Fragrantica when it comes to notes. So here you go. I think there are also some sort of wood elements in here too. There must be. This fragrance is indeed tasty. It has a refreshing tartness to it that prevents it from going too sweet. And if you're a berry lover, you're, you'll probably like, if not love this. I think it bears similarity to Miss Dior Chérie, but fruitier. And uh, Joe Malone Blackberry and Bay fans will probably like this one too. I never personally buy Joe Malone retail due to poor performance. Uh, this one thankfully scores better uh, in the technical side, but not, it's not huge. It starts off with a fantastic fizzy and berry juicy type of accord. Not sour or bitter, but there's a tartness that plays off the sweetness and prevents it from going too juvenile, too sweet, too sickly. It's also very airy, but not watered down. And the, ber the berries themselves are syrupy, but there's thankfully no gooey gobs of sugar glue. Slowly revealed, perhaps at the 30 minute mark, can't smell it right here, but there are some green touches that come through, maybe like the stem of the leaves of the berries, if they make an appearance. And there's even a dusting of some sort of citrus. 
You know, I think it's probably di quite difficult to do a berry scent without getting into cough syrup territory, especially if cherry is involved. I don't know if it actually is, but Fragrantica does list it. Dior does not. But uh, Francois has pulled this off. It doesn't smell syrupy at all. Green, a little green, very berry. It's very smooth. Although it's not heavy or too sweet, I would not call this a light fragrance despite the airiness and not powdery. So male fruit fans may fuel their fetish with this find. Fantastic. Very, very good though, Dior. Very, very like this. Arigato. And Japanese will like this scent because it is polite and unobtrusive. And boring. Rouge Trafalgar lasts more than half a day on me, which is pretty good considering the notes. Of course, it will live closer to the skin as time passes and the musky patchouliness will later become more prominent and last until the end of the day perhaps, but you'll have to put your nose directly on skin to sniff it out. I think the scent is very contemporary, chic, urban, and youthful. It's something I spritz on in the morning when I don't want to think about what to wear too deeply if that makes sense. <laughs> I read one reviewer calling it a pretty and a dumb reach, and I think that's true. I've also read the word sophisticated being applied to this, but I might have to disagree a little there. It's just too youthful. The first time I smelled it, I pictured a very young lady in her first makeup updo and glitter dressed up for prom, but a tasteful prom, about as tasteful as proms can be. Here's how Demashi himself describes this scent. Sure, uh, story creation that links well with the brand. I just want to make it clear to you all that I bought this bottle of tastiness uh, secondhand and when it was less than a quarter full for an extremely low price and I'm very happy for the purchase. It's been an easy to wear, friendly, girlish, crowd pleaser, but also a little derivative. It's a commercially oriented cocktail des fruits. I probably won't be buying a full bottle at full retail price. And if I'm honest, I do not think this fragrance is really worthy of holding a place along with the other far greater fragrances in the Maison Christian Dior line. However, it's probably one of the better scents that have recently been launched directly into Privé stature. And uh, perhaps I'll rant more about that in a future video but basically in 2017 or 18, uh, Dior launched a whole bunch of fragrances that appear to cater more to the East Asian market. So they're very pretty, very ephemeral, and lacking in any possibility of polarity for the most part. And they renamed their Haute Collection Maison Christian Dior, but it also includes fragrances from the old Collection Privé. Maybe reformulations? I don't know. It's all very confusing. For me, the haute collections from Dior and Chanel, these are, well, they should be absolutely gorgeous, luxurious, sought after, and irreplaceable, you know? Give me cuir de russe, ambre nuit, fève délicieuse, bois d'argent, etc. Am I saying this is a bad fragrance? No, not at all. I, I very much enjoyed, still enjoying, um, I love this sweet fruity stuff. This is a berry infused rain coming down on carefree giggles and dancing in the backyard on a warm Sunday afternoon with no sign of Monday. Delightful, mood boosting, uplifting, yummy. It's a lovely, well blended concoction. In fact, the uh, fruit accord is top notch here. And the syrupy raspberry and blackberry truly shine. I'm just saying essentially that to me, this feels mainstream and not particularly original. Nothing wrong with that. As for myself, rather than repurchase, I think I'll explore the aisle uh, of some retail store like Bath and Body Works when I next venture into Canada or the US. I'll bet I can find something that is similarly yummy there, but of course, you know, not as long lasting and yes, minus the effervescence and depth that make uh, Rouge Trafalgar a little more luxe. C'est tout pour maintenant mes amis. I'll see you in the next video. What? Why haven't you subscribed yet? Come on, press the red button. Okay, lovelies. Ciao. Mwah.